Okay, we've got our videotape ready, so we're ready to finish up the rest of our program tonight. If everyone would please take a seat so we can continue. Thank you. Pause for the cause for Bob. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Not being content to stick to the same old program format, the Women of Words decided to put a new spin on this year's presentation. Over the past few years, during the GGAA Spring Art Show, the mayor of Gardner, Mark Hawk, chooses a painting that he likes, and it is awarded the Mayor's Choice Award. For our Tapping the Muse special feature this year, our poets have written their own take on the same painting, each bringing her unique voice as inspired by a single artist. This spring, Mayor Hawk chose a painting entitled Autumn Landscape by Thomas, John Tomasetti. John Tomasetti taught elementary school for 34 years in the towns of Wendell and Irving. Though he has been painting for 20 years, he has been a full-time artist for the last five. His pieces often illustrate the many nuances of the natural landscape of New England. Autumn Landscape is based on an actual site along the Connecticut River. So listen now to the disparate poets inspired by a single muse. John's painting, uh, of which that is only a photocopy, I hope you understand, it was much bigger and it's much more vibrant in person. His painting is called Autumn Landscapes, but my poem is called The Most Wonderful Time of the Year. I take a walk away from town on paths that lead both up and down and find myself surrounded by a landscape that's electrified. In spring, this water was quite deep and with a mighty muddy sweep, it flooded ledges, rocks and ground along its race toward the sound. Now it's a glistening cascade through nature's bright bejeweled parade where earthy pigments help create an eyegasm you can't escape. And peepers come from far and near to see these colors we hold dear. They drive around and then they stop to photograph a mountaintop. But then they leave, they go back home. They don't sit down and write some poems. They download pictures to be seen in slideshows on computer screens so relatives and friends can praise kaleidoscopic leaf arrays while we are pleased at their retreat and pick their litter off the street. What do we have? Just look at this and see the stuff the tourists miss. The river squirrel and maybe moose, the candle scent of pine and spruce, a crackle crunch beneath the boot, magenta sumacs bearing fruit, a whiff of wood smoke on the breeze that jostles leaflets from the trees, the best of all the seasons four with red and orange tints galore, by autumn's hues we thus transcend and live quite well in New England. Kaleidoscope, <laughs> and it is written and dedicated to my dearest friend in the corner, Jan Van Verewick, who I love. And because of my stage fright, I had this big buy already, and I forgot to introduce her. And thank you for me, Marie, um, for taking over. But this is dedicated for you, my dear friend. And this is called Kaleidoscope, and it's about this painting. I'm enraptured by prisons of amber and scarlet and amber, aimlessly turning. I'm truly enamored by autumn reflections on pristine light blue. What's up and what's down just confuses the view. Of dear nature's easel, a palette of fire with mountaintops flaming with lustrous color. Pastel pink soul clouds radiate this sweet scene, not mistakenly muted as if in one's dream. Soft chenille sunsets and grand maple spires just adds to the change of kaleidoscope colors. Life's bittersweet journey is dearer, I say, if we stop to admire its gifts on the way. A piece about John Tomasetti's autumn landscape is called Painted Trees. At the base of Little Mountain, like a paint box split wide open, Autumn leaves break free, set loose by a hundred days of summer heat, 
weathered by sun rays and cleansed by storm. In an ongoing life cycle, a parable of deciduous family life, the trees display bright clan colors while reflecting upon themselves in the winding river that quenches their thirsty earthbound feet. Holding fast a sacred boundary, the elders at the water's meandering edge, committed to growth, reach forever upward. Standing strong through wind and gale, they carry stories from generations of forest relations, saplings to sages all rooted behind. Through annual rites of passage, their climactic beauty transforms from vibrant seasonal splendor and impartial death surrenders, stripped naked in hibernation amidst winter's bold invasion. I wonder if the trees bemuse their loss of beauty, leaf, and shine, or does their heartwood rejoice enraptured in the knowing of rebirth in spring, in time? Autumn landscape reminds me of the natural cycle of life and death in the instant of one breath. In the instant of one breath, life changed from green to gold the landscape river moving towards horizons now untold. In the instant of one breath, bright red the light of fire, the crimson king bows to the earth, a symbol of desire. In the instant of one breath, the green of life ebbs out. It will return on vernal cycle, of that I have no doubt. In the instant of one breath, through the cycles of the season, I look and ask and wonder, and tell me please the reason. Can you stay a little longer? Where do they go for rest? You rush so quickly from this life in the instant of one breath. Very favorite season, and it always conjures up viv vivid images, sometimes brilliant scene scenes as in this painting, other times a little dark or foreboding. Either way, I just love that time of year, but I wish we could just skip over winter. My poem, my poem, Nature Celebration, is inspired by John Thomas Eddy's painting, Autumn Landscape. Nature Celebration, wandering paths, whirling collages and jewel tones, pungent earthen scent mixes with crisp air, while delicious whiffs of wood smoke from well-worn chimneys puff clouds toward azure skies. A babbling brook sparkles, mirrors, Canada geese cry as they scramble into formation for their seasonal journey. Autumn, astounding with its concoction of sensual delights, dazzling colors, amazing aromas, rushing sounds. It's nature's celebration, nature's biggest bash, last opportunity to dress up and show off. And the coaches really are pumpkins. Thank you. According to Greek mythology, there are nine muse, goddesses who inspire artists, musicians, writers, and poets, and that these immortal beings are the daughters of the Titanus Mnemosyne, who were fathered by Zeus. For over 2,500 years and throughout Western civilization, it is largely acknowledged by artists of every sort that their inspirations, creativity, and incre incredible talent come from these muse. So are the muse real? Well, whether the muse are real or just effectively real makes little difference. After all, their effects are real and their substance is no less than life itself. In other words, life has no substance either, yet in effect, it's real. For those who hear them, they're considered either helpers or angels, representing the voice of God. However, in forever demanding perfection, they're also hard-driving taskmasters. As such, it would serve as proof they speak for God. After all, beauty is the hallmark of divineness. Imperfection is how it is achieved. Both incredible and heartwarming, the act of inspiring artistic genius through emanation means a direct, hardwired connection. Thank you all for joining us tonight. I hope you enjoyed our presentation celebrating the muse. Please feel free to stay for a while, spend some time talking with our poets and artists, enjoy some simple refreshments. Good night from everyone who participated in Visions in Verse, Tapping the Muse. See you next year.